Hey everyone, we're back again live with Dr. Sarah Godfrey. We're having just a fun little impromptu chat. And where we left off last time, we're talking about the importance of non starchy vegetables, green vegetables, and also protein, and how really those two things, it seems like we should all be able to agree should be the backbone of any diet, but actually that's not agreed upon, right, Sarah? In fact, a lot of plant-based advocates, in quotations, say that protein causes cancer, plain and simple. Well, I think this is yet another situation where it's not black or white, right? It's not either or. There's, there's some gray that we need to discuss. And I'm, I, I think protein's really important. I like to calculate for every person that I work with exactly how much protein they should be getting every day. We know that most women and men need about 20 to 30 grams at a sitting, depending on your weight, on your lean body mass, to really make the amino acids that help you make hormones and enzymes and other things in your body. So I'm a fan of protein. I just think it's important that we figure out the right source of it and we're not eating the poisonous stuff. And it seems like that that the logic of avoid the poisonous stuff and pursue the high quality stuff is as applicable to plants as it is to animals. It's true across the board. It's true for fat. It's true for all the macronutrients. I totally agree with that. Now, with this cancer idea, I do think that one thing that's important, you know, we know that cancer doesn't arise out of nowhere. It arises in a bad neighborhood. And when you have inflammation, when you have um, when you're eating the wrong foods in your body and you're more likely to have uh, a bad neighborhood, that's where cancer takes hold. We all have cancer cells running around our bodies, but it's when you have a bad neighborhood that it grows into a lump or a mass or something that's detectable. So another piece that I think is important is that you can get too much protein. I mean, that's true for all the macronutrients. You can get too much and you can get too little. I think some of the experiments that we have from the Atkins diet shows us that there are some folks who don't do well with too much protein. They have kidney issues and liver issues. But Jonathan, tell me what you think about this whole cancer idea that we hear from some of the plant-based folks. So I'm certainly curious. So this, I really want your medical opinion on this because I think I might not understand, because to me it seems actually maybe too simple. And that's, yes, protein is an anabolic substance. It causes the release of IGF-1 in your body, which promotes growth. It promotes growth, meaning if you have muscle cells growing, it promotes the growth of those. If you have cancer cells, it promotes the growth of those. But to say that protein causes cancer would be like saying watering your garden causes weeds. Like it, water causes things to grow. And the answer to having a weed-free garden isn't to not water your garden. And protein causes things to grow. If you eat no protein, you get sarcopenia and your bones dissolve. So the answer is just not to not eat protein. It's to avoid creating an environment that will cause cancer to develop. That's, that's the problem, right? You got it. I mean, this whole idea that you've got to pay attention to growth hormone or um, IGF-1 is misguided and overly simplistic. Exercising, you know, I, I went running today and I went burst training. And burst training raises your growth hormone. It raises IGF-1. Does that mean that I'm causing cancer by going burst training? No. No. So with IGF-1, with growth hormone, you want the right amount. You don't want too much. You don't want too little. Same thing with pretty much all the hormones of metabolism. And when it comes to protein, we know that, you know, if you, eat to if you drink toxic milk that's full of recumbent bovine growth factor, you know, that is, is much more likely to raise your growth hormone than eating a source of protein that's really healthy for you. So I'm agnostic about whether you eat meat or not. I feel like that's really an individual's decision, sometimes an ethical or philosophical decision. But I do think that it's important that you get adequate protein and that you get the non-poisonous type. So I think those pieces are important, not you know, kind of this global don't eat animal protein. And Sarah, that, that seemingly commonsensical point you just made of avoid things that are poisonous and, and don't eat things that are poisonous, eat things that are not poisonous. Like why isn't that getting more attention? Because there are poisonous plants, like there are plants that will kill you. I mean like look at GMO pesticide laden wheat 
it's probably not a good call, but it's a plant. And there are certainly meats and fish that aren't good, but there's also great sources of plants and great sources of animals. Why, why don't people just focus on quality rather than this artificial plant-animal delineation? You know, I think it might be human nature. For some reason, we lose our common sense and we start saying, but there's science showing this or there's science showing that. And we need to bring back the common sense. I think that's a really important message when it comes to choosing your protein sources and figuring out what's really best for you. Another point I want to make based on your lovely introduction, Jonathan, is that when it comes to the balance in your body, one kind of simple ratio to keep in mind is that you want growth and repair. That's a normal part of the innate intelligence of your body. And you want that in balance with the wear and tear. So especially if you're a badass and you have more wear and tear, you need to have a balance between these two parts of the ratio. And protein's a really important part of that growth and repair. So we need it. We need that anabolic quality. A lot of people think anabolic and they think of, you know, some baseball player who's doping. We need anabolism. We need a balance between catabolism and anabolism. Well, and they say, I don't know if this is trite or if it applies here, Sarah, this whole, if you're not growing, you're dying. Does that fit here? It totally fits here. You know, it's, if you're not making a choice, then by default, you're choosing to die. So I, I want all of us to make the choice to grow. You need protein to do that. I love it. I love it. Well, folks, hopefully you have enjoyed our bedroom time here with Dr. Sarah Gottfried. Sarah, thank you for joining us. we got to do this again when I have power because my laptop battery is going away and I need to figure out what the heck just happened to my house because all the power went out. My pleasure, Jonathan. Bye, everybody. Thanks, Sarah.